So if we're going to do this 28 day fast, then we should understand some of the physiology behind it. What's actually going on here? Um, so one of the key things to understand is insulin. One of the biggest risk factors for aging, you know, accelerated aging, cancer, diabetes, obesity is when this when we lose control of this when insulin is not doing what it's meant to be doing uh, all those things become much more likely okay so insulin has two key roles one is to get energy into the cells two is to store excess energy okay so when glucose comes into the body it goes it gets absorbed goes into the bloodstream it's actually no use to the body in the bloodstream it has to go into the cell to be used okay so into the muscle cell or whatever kind of cell it is it has to actually get in there to be used okay so the way it gets into the cell is via insulin okay that's our hormone that helps to get it into a cell storage happens when we've uh, when the cell like when we're storing glucose in the liver um, it will be stored as glycogen and then once glycogen levels are full in the liver then the liver will convert any blood glucose that hasn't been taken up by other cells it's all happening at the same time it's going to convert that into fat so it's new fat genesis like making new fat will happen from the carbohydrate so these are the two things that happen with blood glucose um, and insulin is responsible for for this process okay so the baseline that we're looking at with our uh, glucose, uh, with our insulin levels. Okay, so this is our insulin. For a healthy person, it's down the bottom here. Okay, so when we're not actually eating, uh, our insulin levels are low. When we eat something sweet, the insulin levels will spike. Okay, so two uh, macros that will spike insulin are glucose and protein. Okay, so high protein, like protein, will actually push insulin as well as, even though it doesn't include blood sugar very much, it will increase insulin, which is the storage hormone, so we can store those amino acids um, and, and build muscle. Okay, so there's two ways that we can push insulin, with carbohydrate or with amino acids. Now, a healthy person might look like this, with the insulin levels low, and then when they eat a meal, insulin goes up to be able to store what needs to be stored. In between meals, during the night when we're sleeping, and in between those three standard meals, a day, then the body will have low insulin, which means that we're able to use sources, our fuel sources, okay? So we can actually use fat as a fuel source, um, use our body's own stored energy, okay? When insulin is high, so this second line here would be baseline insulin for an unhealthy person, baseline insulin for a healthy person, okay? So when that baseline insulin is really high, they, they could be sitting higher than what a healthy person would get as a result of eating a chocolate cake um, just at rest. You know, this is, this is common to see, okay? So when that person then has their, has their meals, then they're getting these insulin levels way up here, and we know that that's a risk factor for all those key diseases and you know, a big part of why we're living in this obesity epidemic. Two thirds of adults at the moment are overweight or obese. Um, it's not the way it's meant to be, but it's just this system is broken, okay? This is um, quite simply what we need to bring back under control. When this person begins to fast, what we see is their insulin levels start to return to a healthy normal range, uh, insulin growth factor and insulin itself. When those two numbers drop down, the risk of lots of different cancers, um, fat will start falling off the body because the body can start using the stored fats as an energy source, okay? So if we don't have access to that energy source, then nothing can happen. So you might want to check out the work of uh, Dr. Fung uh, on this, Dr. McCullough. You know, there's lots of uh, medical experts who will explain this and talk about, you know, the role that uh, insulin is playing in, in health. Um, the majority of medical professionals don't really understand this concept, otherwise they wouldn't be prescribing uh, the medications and, and uh, treating diabetes the way they do. It's, it's massively misunderstood and mismanaged because we don't have this understanding of the way the body works. Uh, so insulin as a hormone, every cell will have receptors, okay? So it's got receptor sites for the insulin. When we start to put a lot of any hormone in the body, 
you know, and this, this is something that, you know, bodybuilders will think about when they're supplementing hormones, when they're putting testosterone into the body, whatnot. What happens is we actually start to get rid of receptor sites and the receptor sites become less sensitive to that hormone because you're pushing it so much. Now, eventually it's still gonna get in, okay? So with guys who are supplementing one gram of testosterone, you know, Jim, Wend uh, Jim Wendler and, you know, Louis Simmons and these guys, some of the Australian guys that you see all over Instagram, they're pushing it up so much that they're gonna get a down regulation of receptor sites, but there's enough of it there that they're still gonna get uh, an, an effect from it. And they'll cycle it and play around with it and try and keep it somewhat like um, natural cycles, but, but keep it higher so that they can hold extra muscle mass so they can compete in powerlifting or you know bodybuilding or, or whatever their goals are now um, for me that stuff doesn't make much sense but um, everybody's on their own journey with insulin it makes even less sense okay you don't want to be pushing insulin all day it's a hormone of aging some bodybuilders will actually inject insulin to to you know to put on mass to to win the mr olympia or whatever it's a very very dangerous game and it's one that you know can lead you know can put you in a coma if your blood sugar drops low enough um, especially if there's no ketones present okay so um when we're down here and we're giving the body these periods of of fasting um then the body is actually going to start to produce ketones the liver produces ketones uh, to keep the brain alive when there's no glucose present. The brain can use glucose or ketones as a fuel source, okay? Glucose or lactate, which is derived from glucose. It can't use fatty acids. Um, and so we can actually have really low, low blood glucose and have you know, perfect mental function because the brain is using ketones as a fuel source, okay? So this is, uh, this is the state that we want to get into and this is what's going to happen. Imagine if this was... Uh, one meal per day then okay so the spike may be a little sharper but we're getting long periods in between meals where insulin is low blood glucose is low during those times the body's going to start to unload its own fat stores I've been doing one meal a day so this strategy you know what I spoke about in the other video explaining the levels of fasting um, I've been doing that for seven days and i've dropped considerable body fat i'm at 82.4 kilos when i just jumped on the scales i've been sitting around 84 so maybe a kilo and a half of body weight uh down somewhere around there fluctuations it's not strong enough to say with uh, with an average but definitely uh significantly leaner you know veins and um you know body fat has, has changed um dramatically with just dropping back to one meal a day on that meal i'm having a lot of food um I have been having a lot of food. What I'm gonna do now is space this out even further. So this may actually be, I don't know what it's gonna be. It's gonna be a period of a week, if it's gonna be a period of a few days, if it's gonna be a period of 21 days. Um, so I've started the 21 day freedom uh, fast. I've explained about what the freedom thing is and what, my, you know, what, what we're defining freedom as. Um, but yeah, that's basically, basically where we're at. Uh, understanding on a fundamental level why we wanna bring these resting insulin levels down and how beneficial it is gonna be for us uh, for aging and for disease prevention. Uh, there's lots and lots of resources available for this. I'll link to a few key ones that make it nice and simple, but if we can get this system under control, life is better and the world will know a level of health and vitality that it hasn't known uh, for a while. So hopefully that makes sense. Comment, like, share, uh, let me know what you're thinking and make sure that you check out the other videos so they understand the process, um, the levels of fasting. So there's sort of, anyone can get in from two meals a day uh, down to a full water fast. There's different degrees. Actually, the, the, the other one is even less than two meals a day. It's just a, a fast from junk food. On that, you'd wanna just have three meals a day. Um, but that's, that concept of three square meals was very strong when I was a kid. You're encouraged not to snack. Now society's gone the other way. There's a huge commercial interest in having us eat, 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 eat. Um, when, you know, not too long ago, ritual fasting was really common for health. And at, at worst, you know, everybody was saying like, don't, don't ruin your meal, avoid snacking so that you actually get some hunger going and get into this, you know, this state and have some insulin sensitivity. 
what that meant was there were times of building stores and there were times of using stores, building stores, using stores. All that's happening now is we're building, building, building stores, building stores, using a little bit, building, 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 building. Okay, this is the obesity epidemic. If it's not storing itself as fat, then it's even worse because it's causing glycation and damage in the, in the body because we've got high blood glucose. So, Keegan Smith for Roman Project. I'll talk to you guys soon and uh, let's continue this conversation.